Canada, I work in the music industry. Before that, I worked installing glass on skyscrapers, and so I was seeking a respite from the mundanity that had become my working life as a teacher here in Taiwan. So, for the price of a decent meal at a middle-class restaurant, I was able to fly from Taiwan to Cebu for the weekend. A mini solo trip in search for something, maybe food, maybe a shred of sanity. I didn't know, and I'm not sure I even know now. I could stomp out a million miles behind my heels and still feel the icy breath of my own personal history on the back of my neck as if I haven't gone anywhere at all, whispering poison into my brain. That is until something scares it away, a smell, a taste, a song, a beach. It's the relief of a pain you've gotten used to, like taking off your shoes only to then realize that they were too tight all along. This drives me to do some strange things and go to some strange places, and this time it looks like it's Cebu. I landed in the plane at around 11 p.m. It's now almost 3 a.m. That entire time was spent inside the airport. Just in a huge group of like Korean people. And they're fighting and shit. It was, it was nuts. It took so long. They only had three people working the counter. So immigrations was just so slow. And then of course there's the typical beratement as soon as you get outside. All the taxis, they want your attention. There they go, look, they're all playing. <laughs> yeah, they're having fun. I'm exhausted, but I still went and compared prices with all of them, and they were all charging the same price. I whittled them all down to 500 pesos, which is fair for how far they've driven me. And uh, so I just chose the most frail looking old man with the kindest eyes, and he's brought me here to this hostel where the workers are sleeping on the couch, but they checked me in. And there's just a bunch of stray dogs running around. And I got myself a beer, a San Miguel beer. And uh, let's see what else. I got some, some peanuts, I'm pretty hungry. And some water. And yeah, I'm, pro I'm basically just gonna go chill out now. Sleep in the hostel. Maybe watch some Netflix and just drink my beer and chill out. Try to wake up early. Get the most out of this day. <sighs> Good morning. I had the kind of sleep where I woke up and every molecule of my body wanted to stay in bed. But I went outside, it's quite a lovely day. And uh, I've been told to go to Mongo Street. They say Mongo, I say Mango. You know, tomato, tomato, to totally different language. Upon reflection, realizing that all my Filipino friends are really patient people, I'm starting to understand why. I've spent 90% of my time here just waiting for shit. I did manage to sort out a SIM card, which costs 30 pesos. It's like nothing, it's not even a dollar, I don't think. Listen, I know you want me to eat there, but I'm not gonna do it, because there's a local market that way, and if you wanted to see me or someone else eat there, just go to the suggested videos over here and watch every single other YouTuber do it. I'm not into fast food right now. I'm in the local markets. the hostel, which is that way, told me to come this direction to find some local food. And I did, but I've only passed three Jollibees. I don't see anything local. It's a lot of chains. So I decided to keep going to this park here. I did pass one spot. It was way back. It was closer to the hostel. It's a local spot. And it smelled really, really good. Good and spicy. So I'm going to check that out. I'm going to grab a 7-Eleven water um, and check that out. Along this here street, there's just so many people begging for money, and it's heartbreaking for sure. They have children, they send their children to ask for money. 
And you're a good person, I know you are, you want to give them money, but the problem is, is where I'm standing, they can all see me and they're all looking at me. So as soon as I give one person money, what do you think the rest are going to do, right? So it's tough, but your, your generosity has to have a limit. And I can't give everyone here money and I'm certainly not responsible for feeding their children. So you got to leave that off your conscience, but definitely heartbreaking that circumstances have put them in a situation where they have to do that. So not even like 30 seconds after I talked to you last, telling you about the children that are begging, I went to 7-Eleven and got two waters. And when I came out, this little girl was standing there. She, she kept pointing at my water and going like this. So I said, do you want a drink of water? She said, yeah. I said, I can give, I'll give you my water, but I'm not giving you money. So anyway, I'm still just working my way, working my way back to the hostel here. Um, I think I'm just gonna go to Mac 10 where the airport is, because again, I'm only here for another day. And then I'm just gonna find a beach, chill on the beach and eat food. I don't know about you, but for me, one of the great things about traveling is just the different sounds. You probably can't hear it, but there's like roosters cawing over there. Every restaurant's playing a different type of music. Scooters, and everything. I love it. I'm sorry I wasn't able to describe the food in that restaurant because the, uh, the TV the TV was at like concert level volume but just know that it was a rich tapestry of textures and flavors <laughs> that uh, the most interesting thing was like this white roll I have no, I have no idea what it is. It was sweet, it was delicious. Comment below. I'm sure one of you know what it is. thing that's it pretty cheap place I had the nicest grab driver that exists talks about his granddaughter the entire time <laughs> and it's kind of in the middle of nowhere but I don't know if you can see see all the smoke back there that's barbecue my friends so we'll get into that apparently this house has a rooftop bar and grill too so we'll check it out Pretty wicked. Wait, there's the bathrooms. You don't care about those. It's just really clean and the people are super friendly. There's a rooftop bar and restaurant and check this shit out. Right? I'm not gonna show you my passcode. I don't want you breaking in in the middle of the night. And the coolest thing is I get it all to myself. All three beds. So obviously, like any intelligent person, I'm going to divide my night into three equal sections. Nope, four equal sections. Easier for math. And I'm going to sleep on every bed. I'm just kidding. That's daft. Alright, this. Look at that. 
That's what I'm talking about. The smell, oh, it's unbelievable. And these little guys. Oh, oh that's good. Those were no question the tastiest chilies I've ever had. She said they were just called chilies, but I know there's another, there's a specific name for those ones. I had them once, I think, in Mexico, and I fell in love. And they're soaked in vinegar or something. Anyway, on to beer. <laughs> <laughs> They're watching my videos on the TV. It's creeping me out. I sat there awkwardly while the hostel workers watched my videos, but I decided to ask them where I should go, and to go there right away. So I headed out. Not five minutes later, there was a scooter taxi waiting outside. I love these things. There really is no better way to get around. I could smell, hear, and see everything around me as the driver weaved through the crowds and the potholes. I don't know what's happened. I said I wanted to go to a beach. The next thing I know, I'm on a whatever grab scooter thing. And I'm in this insane, looks like a, like a psychedelic beach festival or some shit. Check it out. I found a place to lean on and enjoy my own company. The drunk men were laughing and getting on like teenagers, eating something that I can't even ballpark. The women chased their kids around as they splashed in the shallow water. Workers were busy putting things away for the night and delivering one of a few last rounds. It was noisy on that beach, but quiet in my head for the first time in a while, and even though the sun had disappeared before I could say goodbye to it, I reveled in my newfound silence. back at the hostel and those of you who know me personally know that I have this weird thing about climbing on top of buildings <laughs> like drinking beer on roofs and this hostel happens to have like this whole other layer um, it's I mean it's gated in so you, you don't get the that like little sketchy vibe or anything but no one's up here it's just me they still serve beer the airport is just there and so I can see the planes taking off and I can see the whole city down below. It's kind of a perfect place. One thing that I'll never take for granted again, um, it's going to countries where they speak English. Like everyone I talk to here speaks really good English. And I mean, it's my fault that I don't speak more languages and I haven't taken the time to learn more languages. I would like to do that, but it's just that you can get such a deeper connection and you can learn so much more about the place and the people uh, when you have a common language and in this case it's English and it's just really cool I've been able to talk to all my grab drivers and taxi drivers and just people on the street and people serving me grilled meats and stuff and I can I hear all about their family because I think Filipino people are really um, all about the family and just it's just great Good day. 
If I could offer you one piece of unsolicited advice, it's this. Get out of your life for a bit, even if it's just a weekend. It's the most pleasant way to get your own head out of your own ass. See you next time, folks.